in the beginning of the war. One of the first uh, widely publicized events was the ambush of the National Guard unit. And uh, Jessica Lynch was part of that convoy that was ambushed. And she was captured, she was taken as a prisoner of war, and she was released and became the face of the war. This blue-eyed, fair-skinned, blonde soldier. Women were right there in the middle of the action. Women were on the battlefield. I don't think the Pentagon or this administration wanted Jessica Lynch to become the face of the war. It would have encouraged other women to step up, to volunteer, to join, and to go and do the same things. They needed to show the dark side of women's performance. So they balanced, they countered the Jessica Lynch publicity with the new face of the war. It was Lindy England, and it was me. Saddam was transferred to us without incident. Several days later, I went to visit him. I said, I can't give you anything, but I can pass along your request. And he said, yes, he wanted fruit. So I looked down on this small table next to his bunk, and there was a bowl with apples and oranges in it. So he saw me look down, and he said, no, no, not oranges and apples. He wanted bananas and apricots. He asked me, you're, you're in the Army? I told him, yes, I was, and yes, I was a general. He said, wallahi, one day we will have this in my country. My country. He hadn't resigned himself to the truth or the reality that he was now under control of the U.S. forces, and it was no longer his country. He was not dealing with the reality of the situation. He knew where he was, and his cell was by no stretch of the imagination a luxury. And he's asking for bananas and apricots because he thinks he's entitled. He said, I do have another request, my glasses. And he was holding them in his hand. He said, my glasses, it's, it's not clear. And I said, these are not your glasses? He said, no, these are my glasses. But the, the glass, it's not... It's not right. I looked at the glasses. I didn't take them from him, but I looked at them, and it didn't appear that they were scratched or broken or anything, so I wasn't sure what he was telling me. But when I said to his handlers, you know, he asked for his glasses, uh, but he said they were his glasses, but the glass was wrong. And he said, yeah, uh, he's right. The glass is wrong. You start from the very basics. Comfort zone is affected. Not comfort zone by torturing or beating, but comfort zone by not having the same ability you had when you were not imprisoned. I could see clearly with my glasses before. I can't see clearly with my glasses now. And it was important to him to be able to read, to be able to read the Quran. When he was arrested, they took his glasses checked them to make sure that they weren't wired, I'm sure, and recognized that this was an opportunity to affect a very basic level of a comfort zone. So you change out the prescription. It's not as clear as it was before. We'll take a look at your glasses if you will help us. That's not torture, obviously, but you're affecting the comfort zone. You are building confidence and trust. So from a very basic level, that indicates how many layers of distrust they were facing. But don't you tell him that? You're being punished. Now, if you want a better prescription, you, sir, behave yourself. No. Explain this to me. You, well, I, I'm not an interrogator, but I can tell you that they didn't offer any explanations for any of their actions any of their actions. For a person as powerful as Saddam was, he would likely look at that as being submissive. Uh, if you did that, don't tell me. 
if you put poison in my fruit, don't tell me. Don't tell me because you're showing your hand. Saddam likely knew that they changed out his lenses. But they weren't going to confirm or deny it. What they did say was, you're having a problem with your glasses? We'll have the doctor check you out, and, and we'll take your glasses, and we'll see if we can, we can help you on that. And then they bring back a pair where he can see clearly again. That was very nice of them. You can't help but think that. I really wasn't sure if he would even engage in conversation with me. And I think it was more out of curiosity than anything else. He asked me, are you really a general? Are you really in the army? I just responded that, yes, I am a general. And yes, I am in the army. And these are my soldiers. And he is your prisoner. I, I never said that to him. <laughs> but he was. And he was turned over to me, to my control, to the 800th MP Brigade. So if a week later you, General Sanchez, are going to sign a letter saying you had doubts about my abilities to lead and to command, why would you turn over the number one guy in Iraq to my control?